I greet everyone with the peace of the Lord Jesus. I'd like to invite the church to stand up in reverence to the reading of the Bible that we will have in the Old Testament and the book of 2 Kings, chapter 4. 2 Kings, chapter 4. We will read the second half of, of verse 26. The Bible says the following. Is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with your child? And she answered, it is well. The church may be seated. May God bless, him, bless the explanation of his word. My brethren, the Bible speaks about of a prophet called Elisha. And the Bible describes that Elisha was, he went to Sunem. And there in Sunem, there was a woman. The Bible says she was rich. And she and he would stop by to eat bread with her. And the Bible says that every time that he passed by, he would go there to eat bread. And it happened that the Bible describes that one day this woman sought her husband and said the following. Look, I have observed that this that passes by always he is a holy man of God. And that woman saw in Elijah and Elisha she saw something different. She saw in Elisha that it was upon him the blessing of the Lord. It was upon, it was upon him the blessing of God. Elijah was Elisha was not a just any man, he was a man of God. And when she proposed to build a small room close to the wall. A, a small close to the wall. And there as place a bed, a table, and a chair and a vessel and so every time that he comes to Sunem, he comes to our house to eat bread. He will have a place so there he can rest. So she proposed all this. She spoke that to her husband to build it because she has realized that the, the presence of a man of God in her house did very good to her. And the Bible says that one day there came to her house Elisha, Elisha and the Bible says that he entered to, into that little room that she had prepared and, and lay down there. The Bible says it. And it happened that Elisha told to his helper called Jezi called the Shulamite and when he called her he placed on his presence and he said and he told her uh, I've noticed that you has taken care of us with great zeal so is there anything that I can do for you is there anything that we can or can tell in the presence of the king or, or, or in the presence of the king of the armies and Shulamite could have answered anything but you know what she said she said I didn't have it I didn't have it in the midst of my own people so he said what can I do for her and the young man Jazzy 
told her, told him, she doesn't have a son. She doesn't have a child. And her husband is of old age. And the Bible said, the Bible says that he was old. So then he said, call her. And when she came, she stayed at the door. And now the prophet tells her what was going to happen. He says the following. At this determined time, according to the time of life, you will embrace one child. And the prophet said the following. She didn't have a child. The husband was already old. The possibilities were inexistent. But if the prophet said, and the prophet doesn't speak of himself, but God's, the prophet speaks of the part of God. So when the prophet speaks, speaking from the part of God, the Lord is faithful to fulfill each one of his words. So the first thing that I want to give you is uh, a message to the church here is this remembrance. God has made your promise. He is faithful to fulfill this promise. So when the prophet tells that to her, she said, No, my Lord, man of God, don't lie to your servant. Like if you were saying, Is it possible? Is it possible to happen? And I'll say one thing. For God, all things are possible. Because He's the God that can do all things. He's the God of the impossible. And the Bible says that he, she conceived. And she gave birth to a son. The Bible says, you can read in verse 17. In the, the uh, determined time. What determined time? was not in time and not on her time was not in, in the time of JSC or the time of the prophet was not in my time or your time but the things of God the miracle of the Lord the operation of wonders the blessing of the promise fulfilled in your life and mine is not going to be on my time your time but it will be on the determined the time that is determined by God because God knows what is best for us. Best, best be the name of the Lord. So the word says the following. In the determined time, the time of, time of life that Elisha had said. So now, when this child is born, she saw the fulfillment of the word that the prophet had told her. That son was her joy. That son was the joy of her husband. It was the joy of her household. And there was a gift that God had given to the life or, uh, to her life. And the Bible says that as he was grown, it happened that one day he was going out with his father that was with his workers, his uh, employees employers his employees and the place where the son was with the father and he, the child said uh, uh, oh my head and when the father saw the son complaining that his head was hurting oh oh my head he was he had no doubt he said to his servant take the child and bring to his to his mother well, on the, the days of Elisha. He already knew that many times the cure of uh, the pain of a child, a son, can only be cured by in the lap of a mother. And how many of you are here tonight that live this experience? And when I was a child, when I had a earache, you remember, or a belly ache, any pain, and the mother comes and picks you up and puts you on her lap and rubs there on that place, and the pain goes away. There's nothing better to for a son than the lap of his or her mother. 
the lip of the mother can cure many pains. But uh, the Bible says that when this woman took her son, placed on her knees, and stayed with him until noon, but on that day, the life of the mother was not able to do anything for for the child. And her son ended up passing. He died. And now, my, my joy is dead. Now, it's over the, the gift that God had given me. None of it has any meaning. What is worth to have here, have had here the presence of the man of God? What was it worth to have had here somebody that made this such a promise? Now my son is dead. And I want to ask a question to the church. Has the Shulamite said this? And, and the answer is no. Because she knew that the same man of God that had prophesied that at the German time she was going to give birth to a son, the same man of God, the God that Elisha served, he was powerful to bring life to her son. Blessed be the name of the Lord. My brother, I just want to emphasize this word because many times we forget who, are, who is God, the same God that took to, took uh, away from the world one day and brought you to His presence and that delivered you, that blessed you, baptized you with the Holy Spirit, that filled with the gifts, the spiritual gifts, and gave you uh, uh, spiritual experiences, wonderful experiences. Isn't it the, this God in your moment of pain or of troubled heart? Isn't it my sister that the Lord the God that has, uh, has been described here that wouldn't be from the part of God an answer for you and uh, a manifestation of his miracles and she according to the word she went up and slept in the, the bed of uh, a man of God and closed the door and left and now as she left she could run everywhere desperate and she's she could have said hey, my son is dead everything is over no she didn't do that and the word says of the testament of this woman is for me is for each one of us here it's not proper of the servant of god that has an experience of god to desperate to be desperate a man with no experience of god man that has doesn't have the plea of the the blood for the blood of Jesus, a man that doesn't have the word of God can des go desperate. And when men go desperate, can do things that are not very well thought. And may make decisions that are not right and can even say, my life has no meaning. But this woman didn't do this because she knew where the help was, go was coming from. And my brother, we know that our help or deliverance the blessing that we we need is not going to come from any other place other than from the part of our God. The psalmist said that has done heaven and earth. And the word says that this woman, she called her husband and said, bring me one of the men so that uh, he may take the men of God and come back. He might come back. The men of God had left her house when all of this happened. Why are you going? And the husband asks, Why are you going after him today? Because today is not full moon. Today is not a Saturday. And she said, With him, everything will be okay. How can a woman say this? Because our son was already dead. Everything, could she, how could she have said that everything was going to be uh, fine? She said this because she knew that with the presence of God in our lives, everything would be all right. We can say this every day of our life, every day of our lives. Somebody may ask you, is everything all right? You may say, oh, everything is, is bad. 
nothing is good. No answer, everything is fine. Uh, many years ago, I was visiting a woman. She was already blind uh, in, in a bed. It was an elderly woman. And as we were taking, thinking that we were going to bring something for her, we received it. When I came to visit her, I would ask her, Mrs. Maria, are you fine? And she would answer with a song, with Christ in the boat, everything is all right. Everything is all right. My son is dead, but I know that the God of the prophet is going to change all things, right? And this woman took uh, the donkey and walk and did not stop on the path until I tell you. And she went out, and the man of God came. And the word says, and the Mount Carmel, and she, when she saw the man of God from afar, and when he saw her, he told his, his, his helper, Jazzy, is, 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 there it is, it's Shulamite. And he knew that something had happened. Shulamite, Shulamite would go leave her house and go towards him. So then he runs to meet her. And Elisha said, uh, uh, the message begins now. Up until now, <laughs> it was just an introduction. It's five minutes. And Elisha asked her, is everything all right with you? As if he was saying, everything is fine with me, and everything is fine with, with my husband. Is it everything right with your son? And she said, I'm, and I'm going to ask you one thing to each one of you who are here tonight. The Shulamite left a, a dead son, and now we left a day behind. Maybe you have trials and difficult moments and problems. And the question I ask you, is everything all right with you? Is it all right? And she answered, everything is fine. Because she had the conviction, the assurance that the Lord God was going to change that situation. And that assurance that the brother said in the song, trust, this assurance that we need to have every day. And as she came to the man in the mount, he, she took on, uh, grabbed on his feet. And Jezi tried to prevent her from doing this. And the prophet said, no, allow her. Because her soul is troubled. Jazzy didn't notice this, but the prophet, do you remember what I said? The prophet was a man of God. Many times a brother is next to another and he doesn't realize because the sadness of the soul only God knows. Amen? The psalmist said, my eyes are burned out with sadness. Many times I don't realize your sadness, and you don't realize that my sadness. Allow her, because her soul is bitter with, uh, filled with bitterness. And she said, no, this is the part that touched me the most. I asked, have I ever asked you for a son? Have I ever asked the prophet? To you, men of God, any son? Have I gone to a house and asked for anything? Many times, my brethren, we face with sheep that have not asked to go through a grave uh, infirmity. They have not asked to go through a great trial in their own house or living through a difficult moment. Have I ever asked for a son? She asked. And no was the answer. Sometimes you are going through. There's a situation you're going through. Maybe this trial you're going through, you didn't ask the Lord for. You know, there are people that ask, you know, 
I'm going to give you an advice. Don't ever ask that. Lord, give me try, give me trouble, God. Don't ever do this. Pray, God, give me blessings. Fill my heart with faith. May I remain firm in your presence. The trial and tribulations may come naturally in the life of the servant so that you may be proved and approved. So when the prophet see those things, he says, Jesse, go back and if you see someone does not greet, if somebody greets you, don't answer, just go back to your house. And when the mother hear those things, she said, no, everything is all right. The man of God is going home. The blessing is going to happen. Everything is all right. Nope. It could have been all right. What, what was her, her posture? She said, may God leave and may your soul leave because I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to be apart from you. I'm not going to depart from you. I'm going to be with you. I'm going to remain with you. On all your walk towards my home, we are going to be together. She wanted to with be. She wanted to be with the man of God. And the word says that Elisha, when he arrived in, into the house, the child was there, dead, uh, laying on his bed. That was the situation that he encountered. And when and when he entered into the room, she closed the door behind him, and then he prayed to the Lord. The Bible is not. The Bible says that it's not the first time it happens in which when somebody pray uh, goes to pray, the door closes behind him. He speaks of intimacy with the Lord. He speaks of a moment, a moment that may happen to us, to me, and you which we may go to the Lord, a place to God, our, all our problems and tribulations, everything we're going through in intimacy. And he entered and closed the door. And he prayed to the Lord. And verse 34 says the following. And he went up and lay on, on the child and put his mouth on his mouth, his eyes on his eyes, and his hands on his hands. And he stretched himself out on the child and the flesh of the child became warm and I want to I want to say something that happens a lot is speaks of the body the church lives this experience the experience of the body one praying to the other uh, a prayer of a, uh, the just can do all things many things the Bible says that we need to rejoice with those who rejoice. We need to cry with those who cry. We need to cry together. And here it speaks of the body. And then he called, called and then went up and down, and then and then he went up to the body, on top of the body of the sun, and then the the child breathed seven times, and he got up. And then the, the prophet called the Shulamite, and then he handed the son to her alive. Here's your son, he's alive. Like if he was saying, death is no longer exists. Because death does a couple of things. Pain, sadness, crying, separation. You miss someone. All of it was removed because God decided to use the life of the prophet to give another blessing uh, to the life of this woman. And our God is the God of the prophet. Is the same God of the man that uh, she called. He's the same. He has not changed. And if tonight, if you pray and trust God is going to perform a great blessing in your life and my life. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Is everything all right with you? I'm going to ask you, is everything all right with you? Amen. Let's pray now. Amen. 
uh, make uh, small groups of three people. I'm going to ask you a favor. Don't stay with the same people that you pray for. Maybe it's your husband beside you. If you need translation, you're going to have translation. Amen. Let's let's move around here a little bit. Marcella, go to the go to the back of the church. The workers, three and three. I want to pray with with the three of you there. The three of you as well. Three and three. Groups of three. Groups of three. Let's go. Three and three. Christina, you can stay with him. Pastor Renew. There is one missing here. Okay. As someone visiting, Mark's already assisting us. Mark, Marcus can pray with them. You can pray in a group of four, if that's the case. The brethren can start praying now.
fiz um. Eu fiz um mais, você church standing at this moment. God has already decreed your victory and my victory. Can I ask the church? Is everything all right with you? Bless the service, Lord. We give you all things in the name of Jesus. The wonderful grace of the Lord Jesus, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be upon us now and to the coming of the Lord Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. Is there, is there any announcement specifically? Pastor Renudo, you want to give any word? I want to say a peace of the Lord for everyone. Yeah.